Shut up and sit down. Hello and welcome back to the Tiki Sessions here at Contiki Bar in Portrush. As always, Stuart from Rawway Board Company and behind the bar we have Ash. How's it going this week, Ash? I'm really good, thanks man. Uh, I'm so happy we've got a bit of a local legend here, um, Hanno um, from Freediving in Northern Ireland. And I, I worked with Hanno years ago in a, in a surf school and it's been an absolute pleasure knowing him. So I'm so excited to have him along. Tonight I've made you a, a, like a... It's called a yellow dwarf, uh, basically because it's a it's a short yellow punchy drink. It's it's really really strong. We made it with uh, a little bit of of an edged rum, some pineapple, just some fresh chili, and a little bit of lime and pineapple in there. So, I hope you enjoy, Hanno, and I look forward to having a chat with you. Brilliant. Man. No, thanks so much for having me here, and uh, excited to to taste it. Yeah, dude. Cheers, yellow man. dwarf. Happy yeah. days. It looks Cheers. awesome. <laughs> so, um, obviously, with the accent, you're not originally from Port Rush. Um, so I did a bit of research f on you and um, you come from a, a town or a city in pretty much the centre of Europe in Germany. Um, now my knowledge of you is as a surfer, as a freediver, um, coming from a landlocked part of Germany, how did you get into surfing? Um, yeah, so landlocked as, as much as you can be, eight hours to the ocean, but I grew up next to um, a river and um, also I grew up on a boat. So from early stage on, I, um, I just fell in love with the water. And then um, at the age of 12, we, you know, we traveled to Italy quite a lot. Um, and then I saw windsurfers and I was too small holding a, a sail. So I just ditched the sail, my, um, my uncle's windsurf board and uh, started catching waves. And um, I caught my first wave and that was, that's what, that was it. In Italy? That was in Italy, yeah. Oh, nice, right? Uh -huh. um, yeah, yeah, like, M messy storm waves cool. um, but it was good fun and since then I just caught the bug and wanted to live by the ocean brilliant and um, as well as surfing yourself um, you also ride a jet ski mm -hmm. uh, and you do tow in and safety for Almini as well whenever he's doing big wave surfing so from you know surfing I've always wondered from surfing what I would call normal sized waves like weekend waves that would get here in Port Rush you know five six foot waves to getting into big wave surfing. What's what's the progression for somebody like you from from going from those smaller waves into pretty much life threatening waves? So where I grew up, um, I grew up um, you know close to hills and uh, from an early age we would bomb down hills with our skateboards. Um, so I always kind of liked that rush and then I started surfing in Hawaii and you know they have big waves basically all of the time like what we would consider big there yeah. or here, you know. Um, so I lived there for like two years and then when I came back, you know, I surfed other places uh, around Europe. Um, so from an early stage, basically from the beginning when I surfed, you know, I was kind of exposed to bigger like waves. Um, and I really, I just really felt that I liked that. And it kind of really helped me that I was exposed to, you know, certain situations where uh, it was kind of you know serious or you know I was really tested so it kind of really helped me build up my confidence mm -hmm. um, and yeah I, I, you know not everybody likes to to challenge themselves all the time but for me it was kind of like I always wanted the you know the next level and then it was just a steady progression and Al really helped me so much in that um, because you know you come to a place where it's just you wanting to surf certain size of waves and then you don't know you know, it, it's you know, if you go on, on your own, it's mm -hmm. it, it's really scary or dangerous. So having him there pushing me was was um, really helped me to go to the next level. Um, that really helped me a lot. Do you lose the stoke and small waves, man? No, know? not at all. I mean, you know, when you surf big waves, sometimes you might only get one or two waves in a yeah. session. Sometimes not not a wave at all. Sometimes we tra I remember last year or two years ago, we we traveled like two days up and down the west coast. We didn't get one surf. Um, yeah, so s that happens and whereas in, in small waves, you know, you can get 20 waves maybe in a session in an hour. Because um, I think that has to be, because if you get so picky and you have to have the certain conditions for you to enjoy yourself, and we very rarely get them unless you've got a secret spot that you guys go to, very yeah. rarely is it overhead height and clean, and I, I would imagine <laughs> that would get frustrating. Yeah, it's not also that, but also 
you know, look at the forecast and the conditions look perfect, but then they don't translate into yeah. um, the good conditions on the beach, on the day itself. Yeah. And that can be really frustrating. Now, independent of the size, but yeah, um, there was a time where it really frustrated me. And now I just, you know, I try to kind of extend what I do. So, you know, free diving on the days where it's, where there are no waves. Um, paddle boarding when it's a bit smaller. So I try and have something for, for every day. I want yeah. to go into wing surfing now or I'm um, foiling. Yeah. So then you can do that on the, on the bad, um, small offshore days as well. It's weird because like when we were kids growing up in Port Stewart, Port Stewart had loads of windsurfers. Yeah. And I remember it being a huge thing and it seemed to mm. die down massively. But I've seen them popping up with the odd windsurfers, certainly at White Rocks. Mm -hmm. I've seen a get fair few recently. Mm -hmm. And maybe it's making a bit of a resurgence. Is that big in like the German lakes? Wait, yeah, yeah, but all over Europe would have been big. And I mean, you know, when I, we went to Italy, I mean, everybody was just um, windsurfing. But I think now it's just being replaced a lot by um, kiting. Kite yeah, yeah. surfing. And Kite surfing is quite popular around here now as well. So it is. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So you, t you take the big wave surfing. What, what sort of size waves are we talking whenever, <laughs> whenever you're out? Because er everybody's going, you know, and there's that eternal argument of how waves are measured and so on yeah. and so forth. So, you know, what are your biggest waves that you've been on? Yeah, it's funny, you know, um, a lot of times it's not really, you know, how, how big it is, but like how powerful it yeah. is. But, um, you know, everything really that's, you know, bigger than three times your size is once you're in the water, because your head is at the level of the water, it, everything is like bigger than that, looks big, yeah. you know, and uh, some places are more dangerous or more, um, you know, put more fear in you than others. Just the way where they break, for example, you know, in, in close to rocks or, um, uh, you know, in really bad kind of currents. Um, so it's not just the size itself, because some places, you know, we surfed where they were really big, but then they break in a really safe area. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so, you know, I haven't really surfed like big, big waves, you know, say not bigger than, than 50 foot, you know, say 40 <laughs> foot. Yeah, that's you know, relatively small say, waves, you know, 50 say, foot. You know, something like... 50 foot's a big wave. 40, yeah. No, 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 I, I haven't surfed as well. Oh, yeah, say yeah. 40 foot, something like yeah. that, you know. So one of the things I really want to know, right, is, and, you know, I've known people like yourself and Al and Cotty, who's doing amazing things out in Nazarene and stuff like that at the moment. When you get on one of those waves, right, and you're going down it, you're probably pushing 20, 30 miles an hour going down it at a pretty steep angle. What the hell's going through your head? Because for me, it'd just be <laughs> shit, 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 shit. What, what, what's going through your head? Yeah, I remember one particular wave, actually probably the biggest at that point. Um, you know, I mean, now it, it's not really, it wasn't that big, but it was really critical. It was a really critical wave, really steep. And for me at that time, it was the biggest that I've surfed. And the day before I kind of, I cracked my, my leg. So I couldn't even sit, you know, I couldn't even sit properly because my leg hurt so much. And just going out, I thought, you know, what am I doing here? But the day was perfect and Al was there. So I thought, you know, this is exactly what I wanted so long. He's going to help me and push me. And we're actually paddling together into that wave. He was a bit deeper and I saw the big set coming just out of, uh, you know, the horizon would go black and then I saw this big set coming and he just said, I'd go paddle, you know, just screaming, actually screaming at me like, paddle, paddle, and I, I just started paddling and I just knew like, I'm, I'm just going for it now. And I think would just push me and then, you know, it would get steeper and I would go higher and higher and it would just get really steep and really lined up. Um, and he would still scream, go, go. <laughs> and I was just like, the only thought that I had, like, you know, I better make that now. Yeah. I, I can't fall because my knee, I think I must have torn, a, a, you know, a bit of the ligament or not torn, but like really kind of stretched it, overstretched it. Um, and I went down and like, it was really like hairy. I was on the edge, on, you know, on one rail, just going down. And, um, and I heard him just screaming behind me. I thought, wow, because I thought I was very steep and late yeah. already. And he was already even deeper and steeper. He was on the same wave? On the same wave, yeah, we were going that same wave. Where's the enjoyment? It was amazing. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, is it not just sheer fear, survival, and then once you've done it, fuck, that was class. No, or, like, you know, in that moment, you don't really think anything. Everything just comes down to, to that one moment. And um, you just, you know, it's, it's hard to explain. So your, your training kicks in. Yeah, your training kicks in, but also um, everything else just, you kind of zoom into the moment. It's really hard to put into words. And to be honest, whenever you see any surf movies and people explaining what happens, it's actually, 
the less they talk about it, bad, you know, <laughs> yeah. the, the more actually it comes over. Because yeah, yeah. the more you talk about it, try and put it into words, the, the, the less it fails, the yeah. more it fails. And so you're obviously surfing waves of that size, and mm -hmm. that's, that's something now that you're, you're doing as a business, is surf survival as well. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and you know, that those waves are life and death waves. Things can go wrong. Uh, surfers yeah. have been killed before. Um, talk to us about surf survival and the mm -hmm. sort of stuff that you're training people to do now. Yeah, so I've, you know, the more, the bigger waves you surf, the more time you spend on the water without control. Um, that's just part of it. And that's something that you have to embrace because, you know, if you want to um, surf bigger waves. And, but to be honest, it does really matter if you surf big waves or not, because if you're a beginner, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. Whatever is big for you, that's big. And that puts fear into you. Mm -hmm. And it depends on how you deal with this. So really, I want to teach people or help them dealing with their fears, whatever is big for them. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not for uh, people who want to surf their 20, what, 15 wave plus feet waves. But um, anybody just want to be more confident in the water, be able to, um, you know, deal with their fears in situations where they're out of control. It's to learn what can they actually, you know, there's a lot you can still control and how to deal with that so that you don't uh, have to let the fear of panic come over or um, take over you and you can still stay relaxed. Or yeah, because like any time I'm in the water and I get totally slammed by a wave, it's always that time that you come out from the water and another wave cracks in your head exactly, and then you yeah, come out yeah. on another wave yeah. and you always think that you're like half a second away from running out of oxygen, <laughs> yeah. but you always get back out. But it, yes, I suppose yeah, yeah. it's that panic that's using up more of your oxygen when you're doing that. And yeah. th this again then leads on to, to, to free diving. Yes. Um, and I don't know if you remember, uh, you probably don't because you've taken out hundreds of people, but myself, my wife and my sister-in-law went paddleboarding yes, with you yeah, in Port remember, Rush yeah. and the dolphins were out swimming with us that day. It was a beautiful day, day yeah. And a uh, gorgeous day. And we were in this inlet of rocks and we turned around and your paddleboard was empty and you were gone. <laughs> and I was like, where the hell's he gone? And you were gone for like a minute or more. And I was like, I had no idea. And then you just came out from under the water and you're like, oh, I was down having a look. I was like, what? So what's the, what's the crack of free diving there? Yeah, so that was because you spent more time underwater when you do surf bigger waves, I kind of tried to find out what you can do to become more confident in yourself. And you know, obviously holding your breath is helpful when you're underwater. So um, we spent time training with Barry, for example, um, Barry Atherson. Oh yeah, I know Barry, yeah. We did a lot of training together, um, like rock running. So we, you know, doing that, I realized how beautiful it is under the water along the Causeway Coast here. Just for anybody who doesn't know who, what rock running is, it's like what you see yeah. in the Baywatch years ago where they go to the bottom of the, the sea, they hold a rock and they run and they hold their breath. And Hanno's doing himself a very, a bit of an injustice here. So like you are, mm extremely good at holding your breath and you can hold it for an awful long time and I, I so you there, there, there's the, the famous story of you being in Portugal doing your freediving course and you had to hold your breath for a certain amount of time and you basically tripled it by the sounds of things <laughs> but like can can anybody can anybody learn to or like yeah. can you develop that yeah myoglobin in your body to make sure that you actually like maximize what you can do underwater yeah yeah um so the the basic thing for beginners is you know, you have to understand how your, basically how your chemistry works, how we are wired to breathe. And uh, once you understand that, and once you kind of come to terms a little bit with the pain side of things, and you understand it's good pain, and it's not necessarily dangerous pain, so you don't have to become panicky when you feel like you're running out of air, which is not really, you're not really running out of air. You're just getting high on carbon dioxide. Um, so it's, it has nothing to do with you getting low on, on, on oxygen, that bad feeling. So um, it's just understanding that and you know, coming to terms with that. And you can also increase your tolerance. It's a bit like you know your heater at home. You can up or down regulate it. So you can down regulate your tolerance to carbon dioxide, or you are busy. You can also call it up regulating because your levels for tolerance will be higher. You can tolerate higher levels of carbon dioxide before you have that same feeling of I'm running out of breath. Yeah. And I know we've Perfection. talked about like, cause I've dived in South Africa and I've dived like scuba diving in Australia. And we've talked about how good the visibility is on a good day mm. in the North coast. Mm -hmm. And the sort of like the, the rock formations and the, the sort of bathymetry underneath the, the seabed, like 
Yeah. How good is it in Port Rush or is it, is it as good as... Yeah, so right now because we have a lot of swell, um, the visibility is not that good. In winter time usually, you know, it's, it's more for surfing and not so much for snorkeling. Um, it al has also to do with like the rainfall and then the rivers around here, you know, this bit. Um, it's just the visibility suffers from that. But um, on good days, so say come like April, May onwards, mm -hmm. um, we can have like 20 plus meters. Amazing. Wow. Uh, really amazing, really amazing. And what um, sort of, st like, uh, like you're not going to see, what, what sort of marine life do you see? Is it, is it seaweed and sponges or do you get yeah. to see? Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. Be already just, to be honest, just the seaweed itself is yeah, amazing. Yeah. And that's something that I realized, you know, like uh, I did my training in the Canary Islands. Mm -hmm. And I mean, the visibility is like 30 meters on the good days, you know, 20, 20 on bad days. So visibility is amazing, but yeah. um, it's bound rock a lot of times, you know. There's a couple of places where you have like racks and you can go into the racks, which is amazing. But most of it is like, it's really boring. It's, it's like a desert. Here, we have the kelps and there's like kelp forests. It is, it's like a paradise. It's and are, really are, are you amazing. never swimming through those kelp forests going, something's going to come out of that, like a conger <laughs> eel or something like that? Because that would be my fear of it. You know, we'd be going down there and it's, it's, it's the same as any horror movie or whatever. It's mm. that unknown of... I'd be scared uh, like, to ask Hannah that. Like, like, fair, but yeah, you know, yeah there was one story. Um, <laughs> I went to Scaries and in Scaries there's a, a spot where you can actually dive from one. The, the Scaries are the, the set of islands yeah. that we have in front of um, Port Rush. And uh, there's one place where you can actually dive underneath one side to the other side of scary. Wow. Oh, right. But you have to go through that dark cavern. And uh, the first time I went through there, you know, you go down, it's like eight meters deep. And then you just see that blackness in front of you. And you see like, uh, you know, say like 20 meters away, you see that patch of light. So I went in, but you can't, you, all you see is like this little space around you. Yeah. And it just goes into darkness. And then, you know, there's stuff down there, or pro <laughs> potentially there's stuff down there. And one time actually I went in and that huge kind of torpedo like thing came straight at me and, and like half a meter below me shooting out like at high speed. And it was a seal, a big seal. So it was kind of hanging out there. And they're always there kind of, you know, they're a bit like dogs, kind of yeah. very curious, looking around what you're doing. But yeah, I remember I was like underwater screaming like, mm, yeah, <laughs> because unexpectedly that thing comes out of the darkness shooting towards me. And that um, happened to me in the Maldives on my honeymoon. <laughs> we were um, snorkeling and the snorkel instructor was in front of us and he turned around and he just went like that. Mm. And we turned around, there's a reef shark behind us. Now <laughs> reef sharks don't attack people, so they tell me. Um, but at the same time, when you're from Northern Ireland and you turn around and there's a shark that's bigger than you, five meters behind you, it sort of, Scares yeah, the hell out of you, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. You know, so how long can you hold your breath for then? Um, yeah, so during that course, I actually never, well, I did it once before the course. Uh, and since then, like around six minutes. Wow. Six minutes is like the, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to, you know, really put training into it and maybe even take part in a competition. I haven't really trained particularly for holding my breath for a length of time. Rather, um, there are certain exercises you can do for that. I, I usually train repetitively, you know, for situations that you described. When, because it's usually not one wave mm -hmm. that you fall out, fall off your board. It's the one that comes after and then the next one after and that. So I train in a way where you, you know, you come up, you have maybe only one breath. Yep. And your heart rate is high, you know, at 180. It's easy to hold your breath when you are lying on your bed and you're <laughs> super relaxed. But that's not the reality when you surf bigger waves or you know, you're going to the water anyway. Because your heart rate will be up, you have a high metabolism, um, you're using oxygen. You know, if you sprint, for example, yeah. in the water or you, you run up a hill or you run up a staircase, uh, your heart rate will be up. If you then ho try and hold your breath for like 20 seconds, that's really tough. Yeah. And then you breathe, you know, exhale, inhale, and then you have to do that again six times. Um, that's the way I train for those things. Um, whereas when you hold your breath and you're really relaxed, you are, it's a different type of training. Um, and, uh, you know, you suffer towards the end for like, you know, a minute and a half or two minutes. And actually your whole body is like convulsing. So yeah, it's a two completely different type of, of training. But yeah, so at, minute six, at the moment, six minutes around. So from what I'm gathering from this is everything that you do for fun, the rest of us, <laughs> would hate to do basically so they yeah and here i know the whole the whole purpose of this is to bring sort of like-minded 
businesses in the North Coast together and sort of share their experiences and hopefully help each other out along the way. You basically started a business during a pandemic mm -hmm. and it's been a really shit year. But how have you found it? How have you sort of, because you, like, in my opinion, like, uh, my brother went on your course and he said it was amazing and he really enjoyed it. How have you found operating and, and, and starting a business through a pandemic? Yeah, so actually, maybe just quickly before I move over, sure. one thing, but it kind of leads into, you know, doing that through the whole pandemic because doing those exercises, and you can, you know, it sounds really tough now, but you can really dial it down and make it so that, you know, complete beginners enjoy it and take, like, really good benefit from yeah. it you will also see how it helps you dealing with stress and things like the pandemic or lockdown, you know, so, and I also do like breathing exercises and breathing workshops. Yeah. And during the pandemic, so, you know, those kind of exercises help me to de-stress, but then I can also help people to de-stress. So I do breathing workshops, but then also I found out obviously everything is online and those things I can do online. So I just had to rethink a lot and um, think what can I offer online? And a lot of those things I can actually thankfully do online. So um, I'm really blessed with the things, you know, that I could actually very quickly have a good think about what can I do, um, offer that, and people actually wanted that. So that's, I was really um, blessed in that way. And I think that's a recurring theme. For, for most of the Tiki sessions when we're speaking to people, it's the ones that COVID has obviously been terrible in, in so many ways, but it's accelerated people who are forward thinking and are adaptive and can can sort of think outside the box and say, right, I need to adapt to this and I need to offer a, a different, and it's those guys that are really thriving and saying, you know what, I've, I've, I've adapted and I've got a different offering now and things are going well. And I think that's key, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the only, the only thing you can do right now, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, like sometimes, you know, it does give you the extra kick you kind of need sometimes. Um, to drive innovation. Yeah. And one of the things I find really interesting is on, on Facebook, I keep seeing um, all the different types of people that are coming to you for the free diving course and the surf survival course. And it's not just those naturally athletic yes, people. Right. There's yeah. people from all walks of life. There's all mm -hmm. ages, um, you know, male and female. So, you know, it, it seems that, you know, it's really taken off. And that idea of free diving, which is a relatively new idea, mm -hmm around this area yeah. seems to be quite popular actually. Yeah, no, exactly. And I think that's something really important as well that I try and put out there. You don't have to be like an athlete to do that type of sport. Again, you know, you can, so uh, my intro levels, level courses, we only go down to five meters, but you don't have to go down to five meters. You know, you can go, you know, to one or two meters and everybody can go down to that depth. You know, you only have to hold your breath for four seconds. You can go down to two meters and back up again, you know. So whatever you go down, you have to come up, obviously. So yeah. two meters, you're actually diving four meters. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to 10, uh, you know, if you go down to 10 meters, you have to dive 20 meters. Um, most people don't think about this. Yeah. <laughs> Which is good. It's always how deep you can go, but you're yeah, yeah, like yeah. you say, you're doubling it. Yeah, you exactly. Know, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it's all relative, because like we're, we're talking about surfing and surf survival, but you, like, I'm sure you've had guys and it's who just want to get into the water, who are scared of the water, who mm -hmm. and, and you're educating them how to spot a rip how to, you know, like, so they can actually go and bathe yeah, responsibly. And exactly. So and I really try and break it down, you know. For example, when you, you know, we talked about the surf survival. That's something that I offer, for example, now, you know, to people who already do know how to surf or not necessarily know how to surf, like, again, big waves, but they kind of have the basics in place, like about the currents. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to think about those things anymore. You can focus more about yourself and how to stay calm in conditions that would, you know, where you're pushing yourself. But then I also thought about what can I do for people who have not that le reached that level yet. And then exactly so I offer them courses where I teach people to get the essentials right and safety. So like teaching them about currents, um, you know, how to spot them, um, forecasting, um, just how to stay safe in general around the beach and in the water. And um, that is quite a popular course also now with a lot of swimmers. More and more people dipping and swimming in the water, open water swimming. Then you also have the cold water related safety. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's a lot of things you can, you know, when you think about it, kind of branch out a little bit and, and help people at the same time and I try it in a safe way. Yeah, and I think especially where we live and, you know, we we're talking on a previous Tiki session that, you know, within a 10 mile radius with 10 beaches and world class beaches yeah. and different types of beaches like Port Boundary exactly, yeah. can be a dangerous beach. That's and right, yeah. Any beach can be a dangerous beach, yeah. but I think, you know, Water safety is massively 
important. Mm -hmm. And you know, growing up, I don't think there's ever really been anything like this before. So, and you know, I'm totally surprised there there hasn't been a water <laughs> no. safety course. Yeah. You know, we're somewhere that we are surrounded by beaches. I'm I'm absolutely, I like to say, really stunned that there's nothing like this yet, because you do see people getting washed off, say for example, Castle Rock the pier, mm -hmm. like regularly. Um, you know, just a basic understanding of different swell types and why you know you, you know, even if it if they're big waves, like maybe you shouldn't be walking there. Yeah. Um, or, but to be honest, you know, a lot of times I, I do understand why people make those mistakes much, much better now over the last couple of years, you know, um, because it does require a certain un understanding and seeing patterns in the, in the water, which you do need to spend a bit of time at the water to be able to understand that. So um, I tried really then help people, you know, develop those tools and develop their the observational skills so they can and make those informed decisions you know is it good on that day to go there for example or is it maybe safer to not go there yeah and that was my intention but um there you know it's, it happens on a regular basis mm -hmm. you, you see the coast guard has been caught out again uh, the lifeboat is out again rescuing people yeah because i saw Very in our regular. own big wedding stay that we had this year um yeah. you know there's two boys tried to go out at the side of um the arcadia, arcadia. um mm -hmm. you know and you know, again, there's the arguments of who are we to tell people not to do stuff. People have to have responsibility over themselves. But these two guys look like they've never been on surfboards before, mm -hmm. you know. And then I know Big Al rescued somebody in Castle Rock recently as yeah, well. Yeah. Um, and the life the inshore lifeboat was out last week, I think, mm -hmm. to two surfers caught in rips. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, all, the, all these things are, is hugely important that safety comes first because it is meant to be fun and it is meant to be a sport. But... It's not fun if somebody doesn't come home. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And I know just with like the whole, with, like one of the common themes is it's all everybody's sort of so passionate about the North Coast, and, and it's, it'd be really good to hear your insight because you're not originally from here. Like, what what attracts you to the North Coast, and what's made you stay in the North Coast? Yeah, so I came here um, ten years ago um, as a student, and before that I lived in like other very beautiful places like Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived there for some time. Um, you know, Spain, um, Brazil, Morocco, but you know, when the sun shines here, it's you don't want to be anywhere else. It's really, it's just a certain magic here. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. It's absolutely incredible. You know, the coastline is still unspoiled. Yeah, it's pure. Um, there are many places that you know just scream for exploration. It's amazing. Cool. And obviously, yeah, the people really laid back here as well, so it's nice. And people, I really like now that people understand that better and better what there is on offer here, yeah. rather than looking away. And mm. in some funny way, the, the pandemic actually helped yeah. people understand what they have on the front door. And that's one thing as well. I really try and, you know, not just cater for people who want to push themselves and, you know, for example, in, you know, so big and bigger waves and big people who are maybe uh, put the time already into to you know, be, be fitter, but, you know, I do other snorkeling things, uh, w like, again, there's water safety sessions for kind of more beginner, so I, I really want to cater for more people to be able to experience the beauty that we have here. So snorkeling, everybody can snorkel. You yeah. don't have to go underwater, you can stay on top, and on those beautiful days with the good visibility, you see, you know, you see lobsters, for example, mm -hmm. um, crabs, all different type of fish. Um, we go into caves, I take people into caves, and it's just absolutely mm -hmm. magical. Absolutely yeah. beautiful. We are, we are yeah. very lucky where we live and like you say, yeah. you know, you've lived in some amazing places around the globe mm -hmm. and Port Rush is home now. Exactly, yeah, and I'm, you know, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. Brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Well listen, thanks very much for coming along tonight. Uh, absolutely amazing to chat to you. Um, phenomenal what you do. Um, and especially for me, that water safety, um, I think it's fantastic. Um, the breathing courses, I'm going to sign up to one of them. Um, I've returned to the water after 20 years of not being in the water and you know on like you're saying on days that maybe aren't too big but i feel they're big exactly yeah i get worried yeah. and i uh, maybe don't push myself as far as i could mm -hmm. so it's definitely something i'll be looking into with Brilliant. you yeah i'd love to take you out Brilliant. happy days awesome. listen thanks very much good Cheers, stuff Anna. thanks Cheers. guys thanks thank for you. having me no awesome. problem Cheers. thank you <laughs>